G'day folks, Les from Calander Marine. So let's do something we've never done before and run through what do we do the first time we take the boat out in the water and every time we take it out in the water. And just run through some basic steps, kicking some tyres and running through some good old fashioned know-how. Come with me. So let's start, we've pulled the boat out of the shed or out of the garage, we've got the motor down because we need to do that to fit in our sheds because they're getting shorter and shorter and the boats are getting bigger and bigger. So first things first, there's no point going to the boat ramp if the boat don't run. So let's start the motor, so what do we do first, we're going to grab our flush and muffs, we're going to hook them on. So the intake is through these grates on both sides. So the important thing is to make sure that that's fully covering them. So we've got that on nice and secure. Once I've done that, I know water's precious, but let's go over and turn on some water. As you can see, I've got adequate pressure there, not too much. If you put too much pressure, you're gonna blow the muffs off. So you can see water freely running out of these holes in the side of the leg. We know we've got them in the right spot. So we're going to turn on our battery isolation switch because we've turned that off. So we're going to turn the battery isolation switch on so we've got power to the motor and everything else in the boat. So in a Renegade, it's under this hatch here. And once you know where it is, if you're not too fat, you can reach in there and flick her over onto the on position. So I'm going to leave that hatch up because I don't want to forget to turn that off when we're finished. We've got water running, is to start the motor. Be good if I had the keys. Okay, I've got my keys, and what have I got attached to my keys? The bung. Now, not much point having a boat that doesn't float, so let's take the bung off of there. While it's in our hand, we're gonna put it straight in the back of the boat. I know we're wasting a little bit of water here, but we're watering the concrete. Nice and secure, don't wring its neck, just tighten it up, nice and firm. Keys in hand, let's try to start. With an Evinrude E-Tech, it's a basic, very straightforward operation. Key in, we're in neutral. If it was in gear, it wouldn't even ignite to start. So there's nothing else to do, touch or anything. Simply turn the key and away we are running. We're looking for water coming out of here, which is showing us that we've got adequate water flow in the motor. We know the impeller's working. We know the motor's started, the battery's not flat. So that's our little checklist. We can turn the motor off. So we've turned the motor off. We're now going to turn the water off. There's nothing more embarrassing than getting to the boat ramp, putting your boat in the water, and your battery's flat been around boats as long as I have, I can tell you, I have done it. So, this is a little, little checklist just to make your life a little bit easier down at the boat ramp too. So we're not going to drive down the road like this, all you got to do is hit a bump in the road and we're going to rip the skeg off the motor, so we're going to put it in its motor support bracket. So I leave that in the back room, so I'm just going to go grab that. So people say, why do I need one of these? It's hydraulic, it'll hold itself up. That's well and good, but the motor's still gonna flop its head around, which inadvertently can damage the steering stem. Probably not so much in an E-Tech because of the size of the steering stem in it, but this also forms part of your warranty conditions with this type of motor on this type of boat. So let's put it on. There's nothing tricky about it. It has two locating lugs which fit into a hole down here. So as you can see, we have to rotate this to get the lugs in and then flick it up. So you're probably better off being behind me here, Billy, so you can see this over there. I'm flat out getting that in, so I need to tilt, trim the motor up a bit. I'm making it hard for myself trying to take a shortcut. Isn't it good having this tilt button on the side? You go back a couple of years ago or to some other brand motors, and it's a two-man job, you've got to get up on the control box and try to trim it, 
get this in position and then let it back down. So, yeah, great idea. So back to this. Now we can see, oh yeah, that fits in there perfectly. So, let's don't pinch our fingers. Let's drive the motor down. Now you'll hear the motor squeal. See, strain. So it's taken up the tension. Now if we go back and look at this down here, Billy. See how these two lugs are on an angle opposed to that? Yep. If they were in line, this could simply pop out if you hit a bump. So make sure that these two lugs are not in line with the two locating lugs that you actually put it in. What the Oki strap's designed to do, simply flip through this little stay here, flick around here, hook on, because if we didn't have those lugs opposing like we did, mm -hmm. and that was to jump out, the Oki strap's gonna grab that, you're gonna hear it rattling down the road, pull up and put it back in. So the Oki strap's not a structural device, it's a little safety buffer. So now I would just run through some basic electrical items on the boat. Bilge pump, live bait tank. If it was night time, I'd want to check my lights are working. So while the battery's still turned on, we're gonna come up here. We're gonna check that our lights are working. Yes, we're not going out at night anyhow, but we've checked them. The pump switch. Now this boat's a bit unique because it has two live bait tanks, but under a normal situation, the standard model Renegade's got one live bait tank and a automatic bilge pump. Now how that automatic bilge pump works, it's wired up in two stages. We've got a manual override on the dash, which only works if the battery switch is turned on. And then we have the float activated part of the bilge pump, is wired directly to the battery. So we're pulled up at a pontoon, the gods just open up and we get three inches of rain in a matter of five minutes. We haven't got the battery switch on, the bilge pump will activate and pump water out of this hole on the side here. So it's a comforting feeling. So we need to check that thing's working. We haven't got water in there. We're not gonna test it like that. We're just gonna have a listen and we'll hear if the pump's running. So it's hard to pick this noise up on the camera, but I just do the test. That's me live bait tank. That's me bilge pump on this boat. That's me other live bait tank. So everything there's checked off. We know it's all working. So I think we're pretty ready to go to the water couple of other little things once we hook it on the car. So now we'll turn the battery isolation switch back off because when the boat's traveling down the road again, why do we need electricity running through the boat? Why do we need a power draw? You know, what happens if the battery strap broke, the battery fell on its side, two wires arc together, battery isolation switch, good point. As you can probably see from there, I couldn't tell if I'd turned that on or off or what. I mean, I had a look before I come around the side and I realized if I clicked it down one notch, it's off. So while I'm standing here beside the motor and I've got that trim button beside me, I'm just giving that a little push. I know I've turned the battery off, nothing's happening. So, another successful. So we're not gonna run through and pull all the safety gear out and check it's all there because we never took it out. It remains in the boat. It's not something I suggest anyone takes out of their boat and puts on the shelf. Leave it where it is, under the, in this case, under the front casting deck, all secure. If we did need it, we know where it is. So, tight hand straps. We're just checking they're nice and secure still. Obviously, we put them on when we towed the boat back to home. So, they're on, one here, one on a Renegade again. It is under that step area there. That's the one that trips everyone up. They see this one, undo this one, start to push the boat off. Gee, the boat's hard to get off the trailer. There she is, hidden under that step. So don't forget that one. So obviously there's two things to boating. There's a boat and there's a trailer. So plug the car in, hook the lights up, chuck on your hazards, turn on your park lights, walk around the boat, have a look. If you haven't got someone there to test your brakes, unless you've got a brick handy, put it on and check that. Um, no one. No one wants a fine because we haven't plugged in the plug. So 
I would say that is one of the last things we'd be checking before we depart our driveway. Around to the front of the trailer. So obviously our safety chain is hooked up because that's how it left to go into the garage. We're looking that this is nice and tight. I can't tighten that any tighter. Safety chain. Make sure it's hooked on. You'll soon know if it isn't, it'll be dangling along the road. And a little story. Once, many years ago, I've had my safety chain on, I've had my boat hooked up on my car, I'm driving down the road and I'm thinking, what's that noise? Bang, bang, bang. Ah, oh, just something rattling around, we'll ignore that. Keep on going. I've gone around a corner and I hear this grinding noise and because I didn't put down my tow ball, my boat had jumped off of my tow bar but thank God I had the safety chain on. Because you know where my boat would have been? The poor bloke following me would have worn it. So, don't forget that simple little item of dropping that down and making sure it's coupled on. So, modern age, everyone's got one of these in their pocket. The things don't stop ringing or texts or whatever. Put it away, don't answer it, don't do anything. When you're coupling this up on your car, concentrate on this. It's probably the single, it and not putting the bung in is probably the two main boating mishaps. So, just as a pointer, remember that. G'day, Les here, just finishing off another deal. Do you like our YouTube videos? Well, hit the subscribe button. You know that subscribe button there? You'll become part of the family of Calandra Marine and get given the latest opportunity to watch our YouTube videos as they become available. So get behind us, we get behind you, hit subscribe.